welcome to Catchy Cartoons. I'm so glad you could join me for my Thanksgiving special. We had such a lot of fun in our Halloween specials, I just couldn't let Thanksgiving go by without one. So today, I'm going to show you how to draw a cartoon-style Thanksgiving turkey. So let's get drawing. As usual, we'll start the process off with a rough drawing as we sketch in the head and beak. A circle for his eye. We'll curve the line down as we draw in the neck, sketch in the base of the neck, and take the line back up on the shallower curve and arc the line out under his beak. Now turkeys are very big birds with rather large bottoms, so we'll sketch in an egg-like shape tilted to the left for his body. We'll draw a centre line down the chest and up along the back. Angle the line inward so the feet are somewhat below the centre of his body. <laughs> they must be in the right place or he just might topple over. <laughs> Let's give him fairly big feet as we draw in the toes. And since this turkey is going to be in a cartoon style or graphic in design, we'll keep the feet nice and simple. And don't worry if the toes are different sizes at this point. We'll fix that up later on in the tie-down stage. Just a word, as you draw the legs, be sure to taper the leg out from the ankle area as we want to avoid parallel lines for the legs. Parallel lines are boring to look at and should be avoided at all costs. We'll just block in a simple shape for the wings for now as we angle the line down past his body and towards his feet, as if he's standing at attention. Take the line up through the bottom of his wing and then angle the line up towards his back end. Let's knock in the other wing and sketch in a simple shape to indicate the tail feathers. And a central line down the tail. And we'll finish the ruff by sketching in the snood. <laughs> yes, snood. Haven't you ever wondered what that thing's called? I didn't know until I started preparing for this video and discovered to my delight that it's called a snood. And then, as if snood wasn't silly enough, he also has a wattle, <laughs> which is that flap of loose floppy skin under his chin. <laughs> and I'm sorry to have to say that I'm cultivating one of those myself right now. <laughs> Some of you ladies out there will know what I mean. And now we're ready for the fun part of the drawing process as we bring our turkey to life. We'll define the shapes and forms in the first of two tie-down stages. We'll make the eye a little bit bigger, define the head, and make the beak a touch pointier, and make it smaller through the facial area. Sketch in the nostril, and let's just block in the colour separation line for his face. We'll make the snood, yes, the snood, longer and narrower. We'll make the top of the head flatter. I'm liking the neck for the most part, but I think we could make it a bit more interesting by thinning it out through his throat. And let's make a slight adjustment to that wattle. We'll thin out his chest just a touch and we'll continue through the body. Now, even though most of his body will be covered by the wing, it's always best to draw through an overlapping element to make sure you get the shape just right. By stopping the body at the wing and then starting it up again on the other side, you run the risk of a disjointed or broken drawing. We'll take the line up just a bit higher and shave some bulk off by taking the line down the centre. Those legs are looking a touch thick, so we'll thin the left leg by adjusting the angle of the back of the leg. And let's make the toes a tiny bit bigger, like we said we would. We'll thin out the right leg as well. Now let's sketch in some spurs. 
And if you ever had the misfortune of encountering a turkey that wasn't in the best of moods, you might soon learn that these can inflict some serious damage. Ouch! Now let's indicate the feathers by drawing in some scallops of random shapes and sizes at the bottom of the wings. For the tail feathers, we'll draw them in a more uniform fashion by squaring them off at the top. We'll also create a little dimension by making each feather thinner as we move across the body. And as we're just about ready to begin the second tie-down stage, I'm going to take a quick moment to ask that if you're enjoying this turkey drawing, please hit the like button. And if you're really enjoying it, please consider subscribing as well. Thank you. The second tie-down stage consists of a little polishing and applying a darker and more committed line. We'll make sure that the eye and facial elements, particularly the beak, are nice and clear. We'll commit to the snood. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with that word. <laughs> the snood. The neck is looking good. We'll just define the wattle as it's looking a little muddy. And let's clearly define the body as that's looking a bit muddy as well. The legs and feet are looking solid, but we'll just clarify that right middle toe. We'll nail down his wings and tail. And then draw in the feathers on his body. For the chest feathers, we'll draw in some randomly shaped scallops under the two arced lines. This hints at the turkey's pectoral muscles and illustrates his form. For the back, we'll arc the line around his plump body and draw in smaller but randomly shaped scallops. And now for the markings on our turkey's tail feathers. We'll knock in two bands at the top of the feathers using relatively flat lines, another band along the bottom, and to make the markings more interesting, we'll draw scallops for the top of the bottom band and even more scalloped shape markings at the tips of his wings. <laughs> That's a lot of scallops, isn't it? If you recall from my How to Draw a Vampire video, we also had to deal with scallops there and make it clear that we are not talking about seafood. <laughs> if you haven't seen that video, you might like to go back and have a look. There's lots to learn and have fun doing it at the same time. Let's draw in some of those classic old style cartoon lines across the legs and toes, as they are good representations of texture, but really just a fun use of an old time design element. And now onto the cleanup stage where we will apply our clean and final line. With this turkey being more stylized or graphic in design, we'll apply a typical thick and bold line. But with this drawing, I'm going to push the graphic look by having the exterior lines quite a bit thicker than the interior lines. And we're also going to minimize the use of thicks and thins of the exterior line work. But beware, your shapes and forms can change quite dramatically when applying such a thick, bold line. So you'll need to be careful. Don't just rush in and start to lay down your thick lines. You'll need to study your drawing and determine what needs to be thick and what needs to be thin. In addition, you'll need to think about how you will transition from a thick exterior line to a thin interior line. For example, with the snood. The thick exterior line of the snood will need to transition to a thin one as it moves along the top of the beak and into the face. And if you ever see something that doesn't seem quite right to you at any stage of your drawing, don't be afraid to make an adjustment, as I've done here, by adding a bit more bulk to his chest, and I've created a steeper pitch up along the back, which in turn creates a bigger and rounder bottom. 
and I've continued the line down from his bottom straight into the wing. Now you might be wondering why the lines for the legs aren't as thick as the line work for the body. After all, they're exterior elements too. I've done this because I feel it would have gotten a little too messy. Having thick lines of the legs sandwiched between the thick line work of the wings. This is where you'll need to make some creative choices and decide what looks good to you. If things look like they're getting a bit muddled, definitely adjust the thickness of your line. The line work for the feathers should be the thinnest. You don't want the feathers to be a distraction, as the sole function of these lines is to hold colour. And as you can see, I've been tinkering with the shapes of the feathers and markings because, to be honest, I've been a bit lazy with my drawing in these areas. Stylized or graphic designs like this one allow for many cheats, such as with the anatomy, perspective or dimension. Perhaps you noticed one of these cheats with our turkey spurs. Hint, they're not really in the right location. <laughs> but there's no allowance for lazy drawing. There's never a right time for that if you're serious about your drawing. <laughs> I'm sorry, just a little bit of finger wagging there. Let's just apply a few more thin lines through the legs and feet. And now it's time for colour. With this being a Thanksgiving special video, we're going to use an autumn palette that consists of warm, rich and earthy colours. We'll use a variety of browns for the body and feathers, yellow ochre for the legs, orange for the beak, reds for the wattle, neck and snood, wattle and snood. Hmm. And for a little pop, we'll use a nice cool blue for the turkey's face. But take a close look at a turkey sometime and you will see that their faces are actually blue. And there you go. You've just drawn a Thanksgiving turkey. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and hearing me say the word snood over and over again. <laughs> if you'd like to see more videos from Catchy Cartoons, click on the subscribe button. Ring the bell icon to be notified of my next video. Please share and add a comment. Perhaps what you'd like to learn to draw for next Thanksgiving. Or anything for that matter. <laughs> and why not send me your turkey drawing? You just might see it in a future Catchy Cartoons video. Thanks for watching and Happy Thanksgiving everybody!